from Hollywood. It's the Tom Likas Show. Yo, it's your boy, holla back. And now, and now, here he is, Tom Likas. Thank you for tuning in to the Tom Likas Show. This is where America gets together to talk about the issues you really care about. It's a different kind of a radio talk program. We're the radio talk show that is not hosted by a right-wing wacko or a convicted felon. No. I am your host. Write down our telephone number. You're going to need it. It's 1-800-5-800-TOM. 1-800-5-800-866. Talk about marriage and relationships a lot on this program. I try to convince guys not to get married and not to get into a serious relationship any younger than necessary. Convince them not to have children. At least not until they're much older and they have a much younger girlfriend. (laughs) Then maybe. There are certain things about marriage. And by the way, I say this to someone who's been divorced four times. There are certain things about marriage that I believe... And one of them is, if you're going to be married, that it should be because you want to be monogamous and you want to have children. And even then, I, I don't think it's a good idea. But if you don't plan to be monogamous, if your plan is to sleep with other people, your plan is to be a swinger, your plan is to uh, try it out and see how it goes, you shouldn't be getting married. I also believe that you should have the best possible chance of succeeding. The divorce rate being what it is. And so although I did not have success at marriage, I have a better idea of some of the things you need to do to lessen the chances that you will get divorced. Because divorce is the worst. Take it from me. But... um One thing that I think is important to do is to not take on any baggage at all. If you insist on getting married, the person you're getting married to should have a minimum of baggage. I would say zero baggage. Let me give you some examples of baggage that if I were stupid enough to get married today, these are some of the things that would be unacceptable. There would be a zero-tolerance policy for this. Let's review. Number one, I don't want to raise somebody else's children. If you have somebody else's children, I'm not interested. Why am I not interested? Not because I don't like children. I do. I don't like some other guy's children. I don't want some other guy's children living in my house. I don't want a guy you used to have sex with coming to my house all the time, calling my house all the time. That's baggage. And I don't want it. And I wouldn't recommend it. If you have another guy's children, if you look into the face of a child and you see a guy you've had sex with in the past, you're not the girl for me. It's that simple. I don't care if the guy's dead. Don't care. You're a widow. That will always be there. And I don't want it around me. All right? That's 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 number one. That uh, other baggage that I don't want if I were stupid enough to get married again. If you're a drug addict or an alcoholic or what they love to call a recovering drug addict or alcoholic, which is redundant. Because uh, supposedly you are always a drug addict and an alcoholic. If you're a drug addict or an alcoholic, uh, no interest. No. I might party with you when I'm unmarried. 
I might have great, wild, amazing sex with you. But I don't want you to be in my home. And me to have to ever rescue you. Don't want to deal with your physical issues as a result. I don't want it. And I wouldn't tolerate it. Other baggage that I just simply would not tolerate. You're in debt up to your eyeballs. You have spent your unmarried years dressing up to go out partying. You have spent on your credit card to go to girls weekends away and expensive vacations. You've got credit card debt to buy all those shoes and pocketbooks and what have you. And then uh, you just never got around to paying for it. I'm not paying for it. And I don't think, guys, that you should pay for it. Just imagine, back when she was younger, there she was using her credit card to get all tarted up for some guy who got the best part of her. Wore her out. And you get the bill. You get to pay for it. No. By the way, I also don't want to pay your student loans or any other debt you have. Your car loan, no interest. I don't want to pay your mortgage on your condo. Your bills are your bills. Your debts are your debts. If you have debts, they're never, ever going to be my debts. Ever. If you have a FICO score below 650, 700, I'm out. I don't want my credit being affected by your credit, even if we have a prenuptial agreement, even if we never open an account together. I don't want my reputation being tainted by yours, you deadbeat. I might again have wild, wonderful sex with you, but the last thing I do is let you put my last name on a bank account if you're a deadbeat, if you got lousy credit, if you've got big bills. No, absolutely not. The answer is no. And I don't think, guys, that you should be with somebody like that either. Low FICO scores, bad credit, big debts, out. Out. All right. Also, I don't want you bringing in uh, your unwieldy animals, pets, or anybody else. By the way, I had this written into two prenups, just so you know. It's to be understood that uh, if I'm ever with you, your relatives can't stay over. They can't move in. There will be no loans, no co-signing of loans. There will be no lending of money. There will be no gifting of money. Not even during hard times. You know what? All my life when I've had hard times, I've had to figure it out. And so does your family. Your friends can't move in? No. If that's your intent, if that's what you intend to do, forget it. I'm out. Out. There's just some baggage I wouldn't put up with. I mean, if you're drunk, if you're a drug addict, if you've got bad credit, if you've got big debts, if you've got big unwieldy animals, if you've got family that likes to crash at your pad, if you've got people who like to borrow money and you like to, to give it to them or lend it to them or co-sign on their loans, if you're one of those people, out. Also, if your plan is to have MySpace uh, pages or Facebook pages or web pages, if your plan is to have 17 email addresses... You can do that. You just can't live in my house. <laughs> Out. Now, I the reason I'm telling you all this is not because I'm planning on getting married. I have no plan to get married. I live alone, and I live very happily alone. But the point I'm trying to make to you is this. You shouldn't be tolerating this stuff. This is a good way to help you weed out these chicks who are just going to be trouble down the line. 
no baggage. Zero tolerance for baggage. Anyone with baggage, out. Some people think it's really, really mean of me to say, oh, no, if you were a drug addict or an alcoholic, no. Now, it's one thing. Look, if you're with somebody and they develop problems, you took wedding vows and sickness and in health, for better or for worse, whatever. So you are just, uh, you know, you can certainly decide that you want to deal with these issues. By the way, here's another one, and this is going to sound mean too. If you have a terminal illness, that's one thing if I was with you and you had a terminal illness. Okay? But if you have a terminal illness, I'll be nice to you and. I may offer to help you out once in a while, but marry you? No, absolutely not. If you have a terminal illness, no. So drug addiction, you're an alcoholic, terminal illness of some kind, no. Um, again, I, I've i got no problem with uh, leaving those handicapped parking spaces open for people who need them. But if you expect to marry me with a handicap or some kind of disability, no. Here's another one. Do you have some kind of mental illness? Now, people hear the phrase mental illness, and that creeps them out enough. But there's many things that we have accepted into everyday life. And we don't think about uh, the, the, the problems that come with it. Are you manic depressive? Are you bipolar? Are you on medication like mind-altering or mood-altering drugs because you've got some kind of issue? I feel your pain, but never will you live at my address. Never. Live at your own address. If you are manic depressive, call me. When you're manic, we'll have amazing sex. When you're depressive, please keep that negative, poison, toxic BS to yourself. Don't be laying it on me. Don't expect that I'm ever going to marry you, move in with you, or have any kind of relationship with you. I won't. And by the way, again, I'm not planning on getting married or having anyone move in. I'm telling you boys. You shouldn't tolerate this either. And while sex with chicks who've had some kind of uh, issue with having been sexually assaulted as adults or as children can be, uh, as some people report, really wild and crazy and fun, don't ever marry people like that. Don't do it. Don't do it. Why do you need to feel their pain? Why do you need to be there when they need therapy? Why do you need... You know what? All of these things need to be thrown out. These people need to be kept away from your front door, and they should never have the key to your home. They never should. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-866. A Tom Likas Show. <laughs> it's the Tom Likas Show. This Friday... We'll be doing a live broadcast from the QC 2020 nightclub at Quiet Cannon. We've never done a broadcast at Quiet Cannon before. That's the 60 Freeway and Garfield in Montebello. And um, if you don't want to see my ugly ass, just keep in mind that one of you mugs is going to win a trip to Las Vegas to see the fight of the year. Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao. By the way, I'm going to that fight whether I win tickets or not. It's presented by Golden Boy Promotions, and it's this Friday. So we don't uh, do a lot of live shows anymore. Uh, we uh, keep them few and far between. But we're doing one uh, to help and promote this fight for Oscar De La Hoya and Manny Pacquiao. Some listener who comes to our broadcast this Friday will win a trip to Vegas to see this incredible fight. I've been waiting for it. I don't know about you. I'm a big boxing fan. I'm a big uh, Oscar fan. But that Manny Pacquiao is one of the hottest boxers on the scene right now. I've seen his last three fights, and they've all been killer. And uh, it's worth it to show up Friday just to have a chance to win this trip. All right? So it's going to be uh, this Friday, November 21st, at the QC 2020 nightclub at Quiet Cannon, off the 60 Freeway and Garfield in Montebello, our first broadcast uh, from Quiet Cannon. So uh, be there this Friday. 
1-800-5800-TOM. That is our telephone number. Let's say hello to Ernesto on the Tom Ligas Show. Hello. Tom, how are you? Doing great. Long time listener, first time caller. Thank you. Um, I had a situation where I met this girl online and, uh, you know, things forward, I mean, uh, progressed to where I went to see uh, this girl at this different country. And um, things move forward from there. And How did you meet her in another country? Online. Um, online. online? I'm sorry? You were, you were chatting. I need to know this. Where were you chatting that you were meeting women in other countries? Well, I was chatting on a, a Spanish uh, chat uh, place. Um, it, 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 I met her. I started talking to her. And I hadn't was, met her. You were chatting with her online. You didn't even know if she was a chick at the time. Oh, you're right, right. As far as I knew, that guy. I mean, it could have been a guy, but I and mean, what country did she supposedly live in? Uh, the Big North. The Big North? You mean yeah. the Canada? Right. All right. So you met a girl from Canada. Right, and so she moved. I mean, even before she moved here, about two years ago. But she's I, not from Canada. She's from Latin America, right? Right. So she had some kind of immigration issue, because frequently people from Latin America go to Canada when they can't get into the United States. Isn't that right? You're actually correct. Yes. So she's in Canada, but what she'd really like is to be in the United States. Well, not really. She does not want to like the United States because of what happened back in her country. The U.S. had some influence in what took place. So they decided to move to Canada. So it's El Salvador. No, no, it's, oh, okay. it's South Chile. Okay, Chile, very good. Well, we have kind of the same deal there. Right. So, so what happened was, in my situation was that I, I eventually she opened up to me and explained the situation that she had been um, molested by her uh, father. So, with that, said, which, I as I been, said in my intro here, that's a red flag, right? You're, you're right, and. I think after nine years, um, here I am to where, I mean, at some point I was making over 100 k annually. And when that money ran out, um, now she's heading back over there, back to Canada. And divorcing you? Um, not really. She's insists that she's going to be back in six months. Um, and, you're, and you're tolerating that? Well, no, I'm not. Um, at this point, my mind's made up to where... You do understand that in ca in uh, California, that once you marry 10 years, you have to pay her alimony forever. Right. And you are not married 10 years yet, are you? No, I'm not. I'm actually going on eight. So this is the time to file the papers right now. But we got married in Canada, not in California. Doesn't matter where you got married. Okay. Doesn't matter about what matters is where you get divorced. Right. You file the papers in California. It'll be by California law. I don't even know what the Canadian laws are regarding uh, divorce or alimony. Right. But if you get divorced in California, you go by California law. California law. By the way, let me guess. Probably because of her citizenship situation, probably didn't even work. Correct. There we go. So you have established while you were making over 100K that she is a housewife. Correct. And that means you're going to have to pay for four years of alimony because it's uh, one year for every two year together. Wow. Until you get to year 10. Well, the, 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 the good thing about this, Tom, is the fact that I don't intend it to get that far. I don't intend to be married to her for the next for the next two years. My plan is, I mean, she leaves now. I mean, I don't know what she's going to do over there. And, I mean, I, I, I can't really trust her that much to where I can take her back when she comes back. Why would you even do this? You are now separated as far as you're concerned. She left you. No, she's going to, she's about to leave in about two weeks. No, no. Well, when she goes, she's left you. Right. For your purposes. That's right. when you go to the attorney and make it official. I see. Oh, that's good to know, actually. You need to get an attorney now. Now. Right. right. Now, will you do that? Well, we got to do it here. Yes. 
You live here. Right. This is where you get divorced. Oh, I see that because my intentions were to contract somebody in Canada and do it from there. No. Um, Not unless your attorney tells you you would pay less alimony. Right, and, and that's what I wanted to know, whether well, or not. I mean, well, that you're going to ask your attorney. But don't do it without consulting with an attorney in California. Right. Right. And, and, and I was also concerned about the fact that, I mean, there are some penalties given that I sponsor her on her residence here. Um, I don't know if there's some laws against divorce before a, a five-year period. No laws I... against you divorcing them. Okay. Uh, the possibility exists when you sign those papers that she would apply for welfare and that you would have to pay up to $16,000 a year to defray the cost of public assistance. Right. I, I was aware of that. All right. So that could happen. Okay. But there's I'll... no law against it. You can't, you can't be forced to stay together. That's crazy. It is. It is crazy. No, it, it, it just isn't true. Um, you see, I I seen too much with her, and I. I can't That's really why you need it. to see an attorney. I will do that. Forget about what she does, what she says, what she thinks. Who cares? All that matters is what the attorney tells you. Right. Right. Well, I, I know what I have to do now. I mean, I, I know what action I have to take. And uh, as soon as that uh, she leaves, uh, that's the action that I'm, I'm actually uh, moving forward with. So thank you for your uh, info. And uh, can you take me out, Kobe style? Yes, Ernesto, I certainly can. Oh. Oh. This is about us. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. Yeah, it beats in my heart. Oh. Yeah, the air I breathe. Oh. She's so special to me. Oh. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. That's our telephone number. All right, we're talking about. Of course, we have a zero tolerance policy on the air regarding bad language. But uh, I, in my personal life, have a zero tolerance policy. I don't want any of your baggage, and I don't know why anyone else would want to be with somebody who has baggage. Don't you agree? Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred Tom. One eight hundred five eight hundred eight six six. The Tom Likas Show. The Tom Likas Show, 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. It's the zero tolerance policy for yourself. Why do you put up with people's baggage? And there's so much of it. 1-800-5800-866. Megan on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. What's up, Tom? Not much, Megan. Um, well, I'm a kind of sort of listener, first time caller. Yes. Um, you were saying about with baggage and stuff, and in my relationship, we both have semi baggage. You can say. What is semi baggage? Um, he's got, I don't know, his family, I guess, and then me. Just he's got what? Family baggage, I can call it. Wait, what? Is, what is, Donnie, stop being so coy about it. Uh, what are you talking about specifically? Um, just very not control of mother, but a mother who puts a lot of pressure on him. To do what? To be like the person in charge of the house. You know, in, tra in charge of what house? Of his parents' house. So he lives with his parents? Yeah, because we're still in college, both of us. I see. And what is your baggage? Um, I've had a lot of partying in my past, a lot of uh, abuse. Abuse by whom? Um, just like people not necessarily family but it's random people so you're into being abused yes well not into it it, just, it happens you just, really... no no it happens because you pick people who abuse you i was like three i don't i don't, <laughs> I don't think three I... is a lot for age 21 darling yeah so that's what you pick okay and okay. therefore perverted as it sounds it's what you like Interesting. right it could be that could be. Because you keep doing it. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you both have baggage. Yes. And you think that's a good thing? Not a good thing, but it, it works. 
it works because you have two dysfunctional people who found each other. And we function pretty decently. Well, that's what you say, darling, but you're only 21. True. And you don't even live together. Oh, no. Right. You do understand, and I say this as someone who grew up in a dysfunctional family, who had his own level of dysfunctionality for a long time, you do understand that chances are this relationship will not last long term, especially if you ever move in with him. And chances are you'll be abused as you were in the past. Right? It could happen. I mean, I know that that's what I'm so used to. I'm willing to bet that part of your wonderful relationship is arguing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because it's so wonderful, and yet you argue. Oh. Because that's what you're familiar with, and so you're comfortable with arguing. In fact, you've got yourself convinced that's a normal part of a relationship. Yeah. Well, guess what? It's not. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting, yes. Anyone who argues with me, they can hit the bricks. I guess because that's how I was in my house. Like, my parents would discuss me. Well, and I'd be like, my oh, house was ready. like that, too. And I learned through eight years of therapy. It doesn't have to be that way. And for many people, it isn't that way. Sure. It's not normal. And it's not good. Do you think that if we both put the effort forth... You wouldn't know how. This is all you know. And it's all he knows. And that's how you continue to end up in relationships where you end up being abused. Sorry. Right. Always the same story. And it always starts off the way this one is starting off. Oh, it works. It's great. Oh, yeah, we argue, but it's great. Yeah, yeah just wait till you're together 24-7 how great it's going to be. But the thing is, we argue when we're apart. We don't argue when we're together. That's uh, darling, you don't live together yet. And by the way, you're apart more than you're together because you don't live together. Very true. I mean, what you just said proves my point. You know, when we date, we always put our best foot forward. Did you notice that? I know I do. Have you ever lived with a guy? No. All right. Let me tell you how this works. You see your boyfriend when you want to have sex. No, I see him when I actually want to see him. Yeah, but you want to see him and you want to have sex with him. How often do you go see him and say, I don't want to have sex with you tonight? Actually, we can go months without sex. So you don't even like having sex with him that much? I do. I'm, just, I'm so tired from school and work and everything else. I'm just kind of like, eh. Darling, if you were that turned on by him, none of that would matter. Well, I do. I mean, it's not like I don't. I do things for him. I just don't like getting things done for me. How about just having sex? It's not good. Trust. Yeah, but then why would you say no? Mm, I don't know. You don't know? Because I don't feel like it. And I you don't feel like it because it issues. isn't that great. No, that's some of my issues, too. I just what issues? Um, My OCD status. Uh, always not thinking. I'm OCD. Yeah, it's bad. You have obsession, compuls uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Do you see a therapist? I have, and I do. I've been seeing him for well, seeing different for about five, six years. Do you tell the therapist about the the mistakes you've made over and over in relationships, picking abusive people? Yeah. Yes. And what does the therapist say about that? That I need to love myself first. There all. we go. Does I the do. therapist also suggest maybe it's too soon to have this kind of serious relationship? Yeah. Probably. Right? I'm the one always trying to, like, I'm the one make, trying to make it more serious. He's more like, let's take our time, let's enjoy life, and I'm the one that's, you know, get married. <laughs> 
he listens to you a lot, so he likes to make me listen to you and, and to change my mind about certain things. Mm. Like this one we're talking about right now. Yeah, and about kids and about marriage. Right. So even your therapist prescribed this program. No, no, my boyfriend prescribed Oh, your boyfriend it. prescribed this yes, program. Yes, he did. Mm -hmm. And I remember hearing it, and I was like, why is he talking so bad, like many bad things about us women? I'm like, that's not cool. And then, okay, I'm like, some women are like that. But I know what you're like. You keep hooking up with guys who you end up arguing with, and you get abused. He's not abusive. I mean, he's not I'm not saying he is. I'm saying the last three were. Well, he's actually my first real boyfriend. The other guys were just there. I don't care what they were. I don't care what their titles were. How did somebody get into a place where they could abuse you? I love them. And that's who you love, people who abuse you. People who argue with you. That's who you love. Because you believe, having grown up in a family like that, that that's the way it is. Yeah, well, I grew up in a family like that. I've got news for you. That's not the way it is. That's the way it is when people are sick and need help. I concur. I, I can't really say, I can't fight with you because like, I understand where you're totally coming from. Do you disagree? Do I disagree? No. Maybe you want to tell your therapist we had this conversation. Yeah. And see what he says. See if he disagrees with me. He probably won't because most people in my life, friends, family, boyfriend, everyone says, they all say that I'm very, I'm eager to please and very, and I get um, used very easily. There we easy. go. And they know you better than I do. I think we need you. We know everything we need to know. Tom like it. 1-800-5800-TOM. 1-800-5800-862. The Tom Likas Show. From Hollywood, I'm Tom Likas here at 1-800-5800-TOM. And uh, we're talking about the zero tolerance policy for you. I have one here on the air. If you curse at me, we hang up the phone. If, it, if it's an accident, we can't even tolerate one curse word. That's it, because the feds will come down on us. So we can't have that happen. But in your life, don't you make rules for yourself? Don't you say there's certain things I'm just not going to tolerate? I'm not going to be abused. I'm not going to tolerate criticism. I'm not going to tolerate arguing. I'm not going to help people with their problems. Anybody who comes into the relationship with too many problems, that's not the person for you. And who cares? Do those people deserve love? Nobody deserves anything, okay? You deserve to be with the best person you can be with. You understand? That's what we're talking about here. Why would you tolerate somebody else's package? 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Let's say hello here to Sid on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Hey, I'm that Tom. Ah, uh, Sid, how you doing? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm doing, uh, I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Um, I, I got a question, uh, uh c concerning about baggage and all. And I was listening to, uh, your segment for today. Man, um, uh, I'm going out with this, uh, this one, uh, this one broad, right? And, uh, she's about 21. She has, uh, she has a kid. And, uh, she just recently broke up with, uh, with her man. Actually, they got separated because he got locked up and he's in prison. And uh, basically, I mean... Why are you in a situation like this? Because the sex is great, man. I don't care if the sex is great. <laughs> yeah, she can... Why do you need to have a girlfriend? Let's start with that. <laughs> well, basically... um. Well, let me tell you my situation. No, um, no. First, tell me why you need to have a girlfriend. Um, I guess uh, I'm too lazy to go out and uh, party and uh, 
Have some fun. <sighs> Can you just have sex? Life. Can't you oh. just have sex? Yeah. Can't yeah, you yeah. just have fun? Uh, yeah. 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 But see, my situation where I'm at, I, I'm not allowed to be out past a certain amount of where hours. Where are you? Prison? Are you calling from prison? Uh, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm free. I'm calling from Santa Ana. So, what do you mean you're not allowed out? Why not? Um, well, uh, I'm in a program because because uh, of my drug use. Of my actually my drug abuse, and uh, I'm right now getting rehabilitated. I'm okay. getting better. I mean, I'm I'm working. I'm starting. I, I'm actually looking for a job. Trying to get a job. I'm out there on the field. No, uh, good. I now, what happens if you knock up a single mother? Uh, and uh, I don't know. I'm screwed, I guess. Right, and you realize that having sex with a single mother increases the chances that you will become a father. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. That's true. Right. Yeah. And what's yeah. that going to do to your rehabilitation? Ah, oh, man. It's going to it's going to send me back. It's going to send right. me back. Don't you think about these things? I do, I mean I do Tom and um and I'm trying my best and uh, she's she's in the same position as I am too and uh And and what were you telling me about uh, was that the father of the kid? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh he's in prison and uh So what does that tell you about her? <laughs> she likes it rough, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and that's a problem for you. <laughs> no, no, that's not a problem. Yeah, no, it's a problem for you. Because the boyfriend or the husband or whatever he is, he ended up in prison. Yeah. Let me ask you another problem, Sid. Uh, what happens when the father of that kid gets out of prison? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know. Oh, have you, you see, you haven't thought any of this out, have you? <laughs> and that's why uh, you're 27 and still being rehabilitated because you don't think about anything before you do it. Yeah. Don't you think the best rehabilitation you could get is to start today thinking about the consequences of what you do? Yeah. I mean, but, man, I, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm used to that. Quick, fast, easy fix. I know what you're used to, but look what air has gotten you. You got no job. You have to see your counselor. You're not. You have a curfew. You're 27 years old. What college did you attend? Uh, no, no college. Yeah, of course you didn't. Uh, yeah. So maybe you need to try doing it a different way, don't you? So how would you suggest breaking up with her? <laughs> Just break up with her. <laughs> yeah, but see, uh, Be I a man. Wanna... Step up to the plate. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. You give that some thought there, Sid. 1-800-5800-TOM. That's our telephone number. Here's Ron on the Tom Likas Show. Hello. Tom, how's it going? It's going okay. Good. Uh, well, uh, I just wanted to uh, ask you a quick question. Um, I got a call from my girlfriend, my ex-girlfriend, actually, who uh, I haven't talked to in two years. Um, she is going through uh, AA, and she's at the step where she has to apologize for all the crap she put me through. And... Um, She's uh she called me out of the blue. I haven't talked to her. Um today's her birthday actually. And uh so she called me and left me a message while I was at work, you know, wondering if we could meet up, if we could uh we could talk and, and see what's going on. Um and the thing is I, I have a girlfriend right now who I've been with for a while. Um and uh so I guess I'm I just wanna ask like what do you think uh, the scenario should be? Like, do you think I should meet up with her? Or do you think I should say, you know, it's over, let's not... It's let's over. What do, you need, what do you need that for in your life? I don't need that in my life. Well, but done. I guess I guess, uh, I guess. guess the question was because I, I sort of dealt with all that, 
you know, crap when she was going through her her uh, alcoholism, and um, and I was there like when she started going to the program. So I guess I feel a little. Obligated it's not your to problem. Did you cause her to be an alcoholic? No. Did you cause her to do mean things to you? No. Did you cause her to, uh, I'm imagining she uh, was in trouble places and you had to go get her or she got uh, picked up on a DUI or things like that? Did stuff like that happen? Yeah, she got a DUI. Right, and you had to go out there and bail her out? No, it was actually while we were broken up at the time. Mm, but she called you? She did. Right. And did you have to do anything? No. Okay. But um, all the things she's had to apologize for. Did you deserve them? No. So then why do you owe her anything? I, I guess you're right. I don't owe her anything. You don't owe her a thing. Huh. I, yeah, I, I, it was just, uh, it sort of came as a shock to me because she just called out of nowhere, you know, and I hadn't talked to her in however many years, two years. So it just sort of took, you know, shocked me a little bit, I guess. Yeah, well, uh, now I got a little shock for you, too. Okay, uh, this is her problem, not yours. People yeah. who went to twelve-step programs are the most egotistical, self-centered, self-destructive people I know, and it's all about them. And even her thing about apologizing to you—why can't she leave it at that? Why does she have to see you now? I guess that's part of the step. You have to like meet in person, I guess. Or you, something, no, or? But that you don't have to. Okay. The answer is no. So don't meet up with her. No. All right. This is not, you, you know what? Helping her recover from alcoholism is not your problem. Uh, I guess that's true. You know, let uh, let her sponsor handle that. That's not your problem. Okay. Thank you very much, Tom. Can you uh, blow me up? Yes. Yes, I can. Our email address is my name. It's Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. You got that? Tom at BlowMeUpTom.com. Don't forget this Friday at the Quiet Cannon, someone's going to win a trip to see Oscar De La Hoya fight Manny Pacquiao in Las Vegas. Be there Friday. The Tom Likas Show.